The former head of Harvard University's Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology was today sentenced to six months house arrest. Charles Lieber was found guilty of making false statements, hiding income from a Chinese program, all the while receiving millions in funding from the US government for research projects. Senior US correspondent for Chemistry World magazine, Rebecca Traeger, takes us through how this all came to light. So Charles Lieber uh, was arrested in January 2020. And at the time, he was 60 years old. He was the chair of Harvard University's chemistry and chemical biology department, uh, a, a nanoscience pioneer. He'd been a faculty member in that department for about 30 years. He and his research group had received more than 15 million in grant funding from uh, the US National Institutes of Health and the Department of Defense. And he published more than 400 research papers in peer-reviewed journals over his career, which is a tremendous, tremendous amount. His contributions to nanochemistry actually earned him the Wolf Prize of Chemistry in 2012. So we're talking about an extremely preeminent scientist. He was arrested after being questioned by FBI agents on Harvard's campus. Uh, he'd sort of attracted their attention because as a principal investigator on all of these federal research grants, he was required to disclose any sort of significant uh, financial conflicts of interest. That includes funding from other governments or international parties. And he hadn't reported his income from China to Harvard or to the funding agencies uh, that support his work. So to this point, he had been accepting money from a Chinese organization and working with them on the side, so to speak. Is that illegal in the US? Well, it's a it's a it's a delicate balance. The the part that was was incorrect was not reporting it um, to the funder, the government, U.S. government funder, and um, to the university, so they could inform uh, the funder. He had actually become a strategic scientist at one uh, University of Technology, and he had participated in China's Thousand Talents Recruitment Plan which is not illegal, but raises a lot of uh, red flags. It's the government's uh, sort of strategy, the Chinese government's strategy to attract and cultivate the high level technical talent across the world to better its scientific and technological uh, preeminence and uh, economic prosperity and national security. He had uh, participated in uh, this sort of program from around 2012 to 2017, according to the Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice says through that three-year Thousand Talents contract with that Chinese university, he was paid up to 50,000 a month in salary on top of living expenses of up to 150,000 and more than 1.5 million to establish a research center lab at the university. That's according to the US Department of Justice. His lawyers say, dispute the numbers, but don't actually give any specific ones themselves. He was convicted in December 2021 by a jury of two counts of making false statements to federal authorities, two counts of false income tax return, and two counts of failing to report uh, foreign bank and financial accounts to the IRS. So nothing about research fraud, nothing about um, espionage. Yeah, but you know, uh, it would seem, Rebecca, that there is a conflict of interest <clears throat> for a scientist who's receiving so much money from the US government working for a foreign country. His lawyers say he wasn't working for China. However, he had this arrangement, obviously, through the uh, that, that uh, specific university in China. And, and, and you know, there, there are obviously potential concerns, um, significant. There are, of course, potentially concerns, significant concerns um, about uh, that sort of involvement. So this week he was sentenced. What sort of sentence did he receive? So he had faced up to 26 years in prison and 1.2 million in fines for his six convictions. His legal team uh, had requested that he receive no prison time, uh, just probation or supervised release with or without home arrest. They pointed out, again, no grant fraud, no IP theft. His research was never in question. Uh, but government prosecutors said he'd lied to 
uh, government agents to block sort of reasonable questions and inquiries into his research grants and to cover up his cheating on his taxes. And they recommended a sentence of 90 days in prison and 150,000 in fines. Um, in the end, the judge yesterday sentenced him to time served. That's the two days he had already served in prison, two years of supervised release with six months of home confinement and a fine of $50,000 on top of over $33,000 in restitution to the IRS. Mm. So, Rebecca, has this now raised questions for uh, the US in terms of an academia in the US about these affiliations with overseas universities? So, this has been something that really came to the forefront uh, when the Trump administration launched its so-called China Initiative around 2018. And the, the, the purpose of the China Initiative was to counter what was seen as the Chinese government's attempts at espionage and, and efforts to steal US intellectual property or trade secrets from US universities and industry. But the program was blasted uh, by many in academia and, and outside for uh, what was considered by many racially profiling um, researchers and discouraging sort of the best and brightest uh, scientists from coming to the US and participating in its research enterprise. Lieber is considered the first person charged under the China Initiative to be convicted by a jury. Uh, the U.S. government, importantly, actually finally canceled the China Initiative in February of this year uh, after many of the criminal cases that the Department of Justice brought against academics with this program uh, ended up being tossed out. Rebecca, great to uh, talk to you and get you to tell us about the story. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.